Okay, in this video, we're going to learn how to write simple equations. Uh, it would help if you've already watched the video on how to write the formula for an ionic compound. And we're not going to balance the equations today. We're just going to write the simple equations and I'll do a separate um, video to show us how to balance them. Now, before we start looking at writing the equations, I want to talk about diatomic elements. Uh, diatomic elements, there are seven of them in the periodic table. Um, and you can think of these as like lonely elements. They don't like to be by themselves. So, for example, hydrogen is a diatomic element. So if you ever had some hydrogen gas, you wouldn't have singular hydrogen atoms uh, because they don't like to be by themselves. Instead, they're more stable, paired up. So you wouldn't have one hydrogen atom, but you'd have two paired up to form a hydrogen molecule. This one wouldn't be by itself. It would pair up with another one to form a diatomic hydrogen molecule. So di meaning two and atomic meaning atom. Hydrogen is diatomic, so you never get H's by themselves. You always get H bonded to another H. If we take argon, argon is not diatomic. And that means if you were to zoom in and have a look at argon gas, you would have singular argon atoms. So anything that is diatomic forms molecules of two and anything that's not diatomic um, won't and you can get singular atoms. Now, I so said there are seven diatomic elements in the periodic table. These are the diatomic elements and for your GCSE um, and if you're lower down the school in key stage three, you'll be expected to remember all of these. Now, there's a couple of ways you can remember them. Um, I find the easiest way to remember these seven elements, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, chlor chlorine, bromine, iodine, are to remember their positions on the periodic table because apart from hydrogen, the others all form an L shape where you start with nitrogen, go along to oxygen, along to fluorine and then down to chlorine, bromine, iodine. Another way you can remember them is by using the phrase have no fear of ice cold beer and some of the letters correspond to the symbols of the diatomic elements. So we have H corresponds to hydrogen, N corresponds to nitrogen, F for fluorine, O for oxygen, I for iodine. Uh, it's not C for carbon, but it's C, L for chlorine. And it's uh, not B for boron, but it's B, R for bromine. So that's another way of remembering it. Either their position in the product table is an L shape plus hydrogen or have no fear of ice cold beer. And to be honest, the more of these equations you write, uh, you'll just become familiar with these being the diatomic elements. Uh, one of the most common mistakes I see of diatomic elements when writing simple equations is that people people's think that um, diatomic elements uh, always have to be in twos when they're in compounds. Now that's not true. Okay, if we're thinking about them as the lonely elements, the elements that don't like to be by themselves, if they're already in a compound, then they're not lonely. They've already partnered up with someone. Uh, so if we do some examples, magnesium oxide is MgO. Now in the previous video, I showed us how to work that out because the magnesium ion is Mg2 plus and the oxide ion is O2 minus. So we've got the same number of pluses as, as minuses. So we can write just one Mg and one O together to get the formula of magnesium oxide. Now, sometimes pupils, because they know oxygen is diatomic, they stick a two on the end there. That's wrong, okay? Don't do that. Diatomic elements, um, you only need to consider when you're writing just the element, not if it's in a compound. So we're gonna be focused on turning a word equation into a simple equation. Word equations are fairly straightforward, um, but turning them into a simple equation is the challenge. So here we've got a word equation for lithium reacting with oxygen 
and that forms lithium oxide. So before we start, let's just recap on what this means. These are the reactants. The arrow here means a chemical reaction. Okay, and after the arrow, we have the products. Okay, in this case, there's only one product, uh, but in some uh, different reactions, you may have just one reactant, you may have just one product, you may have two reactants, you may have two products or three products. Okay, today we're going to look at how we can turn this into this, but I'm going to not show you how to write these numbers in front. This is to balance an equation. I'll do that on the next video. For today, we're going to be focused on turning um, the, the black word equation here into the symbol equation here, but without these numbers in orange. Okay, so lithium Li, oxygen O2, and lithium oxide is Li2O. Right, let's do a couple of examples then. To remind us of what the diatomic elements are, I'm going to put those at the top. And I'm going to work through a few word equations and turn them into symbol equations. So, I find the easiest way to start off is to take all of the elements first and do the compounds next. So magnesium is an element. Is it one of our diatomic elements? No, it's not. So I simply write Mg by itself. Okay, oxygen is an element. Is it one of our diatomic elements? Yes, it is, which means I don't write O by itself. But because it's diatomic, likes to be in twos, I'm going to put a little two. Next, we copy the arrow and then we come to our compounds. OK, so we've done an element, we've done our element and I've got a compound magnesium oxide. I covered this in the last video. Uh, magnesium oxide would be MgO. OK, this isn't balanced, but we'll do that in the next video. Sodium plus chlorine forms sodium chloride. Sodium and chlorine are our elements, so I'll do those first. Sodium chloride is a compound, I'll do that next. Sodium, is it one of our diatomics? No, it's not. So I write its symbol, which is Na, by itself. Chlorine, is it a diatomic? Yes, it is. So I don't write just Cl, but I write Cl little t. Copy in our reaction arrow. Sodium chloride. So the formula of sodium chloride is NaCl which you'd use a table of ions to work out. Okay, it's not balanced, but we'll leave it there for today. Lithium plus water forms lithium hydroxide plus hydrogen. Okay, so we've got two reactants and two products this time. Uh, but let's focus on the elements first. So lithium is an element, water is a compound, lithium hydroxide is a compound, and hydrogen is an element. So lithium, is it diatomic? No, it's not. Li. Plus, I'll leave that blank for now. Write my arrow in, leave that blank for now. Hydrogen, is it diatomic? Yes, it is. So I don't just write H, but I write H2. Okay, now I'll come to my compounds. Now, water is one of those compounds you just need to know. It's a covalent compound, and we need to remember that the formula for water is H2O. Lithium hydroxide, we use your table of ions, it's Li plus and OH minus. So we write those together as LiOH. Okay, it's not balanced, um, but that's our symbol equation. Okay, last one. Potassium bromide plus chlorine forms potassium chloride plus bromine. It's a displacement reaction. The elements are chlorine and bromine, and they're both diatomic. So I can write Cl2 and Br2. Potassium bromide, use your table of ions. Potassium bromide is KBr. Potassium chloride, use your table of ions. It's KCl. Okay, have a, few, have a go at a few yourself and then attempt the next video where I'll show you how to balance the symbol equations.